nice. Wow, that's so nice. <laughs> I don't know. Welcome to the podcast, and that's why we drink, where we talk about dogs in baby voices. And how nice they are. Baby handsome boy. Oh, bitty, 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 bitty. Is that so special? All those belly rubs? I have a surprise for you. Oh, good. I have a surprise for you, too. Do yours, you really? Yours is probably better. Do you want to do yours first, then? No, please do yours first. You want me to blow you out of the water first? Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I need you what to do you mean? I need you to close your eyes, and I, want, this, um, I want Eva to videotape you this. You told Eva to bring her phone. I didn't... I took my bra off, so... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just want Eva... I just know you're going to wish that you had this on tape. All right. Should just, I take my glasses off? Oh, I mean, now I'm being vain, and it's not working. <laughs> Nothing worse than trying to be vain and it's just not successful. Okay, just close your eyes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I went home. Mm-hmm. And while I was home for the wedding. Oh, right. I went through my stuff. <gasps> and I found something. Oh, for God's sake. And so you may open your eyes. <laughs> <gasps> I found oh, my clown nose. Oh, my God, <laughs> M. That's your original clown nose. This is the original. That's the original fucking... 2006, baby. That's like real... Look at his nostrils. Ah! Ew! <laughs> Why? Why the hell does it have nostrils? You so look I can like, breathe. You look like a serial killer. Okay, well, that's not the reaction I was expecting. Sorry. But thank you. I love it. It's beautiful. You look so handsome. But it's it's it still fits like a glove. It actually is so weird how it fits your... Instead of those big... It's a custom-made nose. I didn't just buy this from a costume shop. Wait, they, like, mold your nose like a retainer, but for your nose. They, like, they size your nose and figure out what, what's good for your face shape. That's all. That's all I wanted, Eva. I just wanted her to have that for the rest of her life documented. I don't know what to do with this. So, for the rest of the episode, I was thinking I'd just go clown nose on you. Can you squeak it? No. Oh. You can only do that to the uniform. The shirt. Yeah. You want to touch <laughs> it? You want to touch it? Nope. <laughs> that is so bananas. It looks like your nose. Mm-hmm. It's not like the big round ones. No, they're never actually the, the big round one. Those are just like the ones that everyone... It's a stigma that we're trying to break, actually. So. Oh, oops. Your shirt doesn't help. <laughs> Your like, weird jersey. My own clown uniform. That is... Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad it still exists. And I'm glad you didn't throw it away. I would have Me been, too. I would have been worried you would have thrown it's it away. It's apparently... It's starting to disintegrate, though, which is... <gasps> no! Because, I mean, it's just, it's just a thin piece of, like, silicone. So it's, like, breaking down after a decade. After, like, more than a decade. So if you, like, look at it, it's starting to, like, stretch out and... It doesn't have the same shine it used to, you know? It used to be polished. You gotta just... And now it's just a matte nose. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you just got to put some WD-40, shine that thing up. I'm Listen, I'm wearing a clown nose. I'm drinking my LaCroix. It's a very <laughs> LA kind of day. We're in a very weird place in our lives. What's my surprise? Okay, here we go. My dad was here yesterday. He was? Yeah, he was here for two days. Did I not tell you that? Uh, uh, no. Nope. So he was here kind of randomly for two days hi dad is that why your whole house is clean no but that's because my mom was here for a week oh (laughs) and she planted a whole bunch of things in the backyard and set up my whole house and tim cleaned every single window in my house what a gem and genius and gentleman you you sounded like um the triple g you sounded like when you hold down a key on a keyboard for a really long time (laughs) and it goes like i am microsoft sam actually (laughs) You're clippy. <laughs> um, okay, so my dad was in town yesterday, and I wanted him to come say hi and leave you a little message. So I'm going to play it for you, and I want you to kind of just, like, listen and say whatever you want. Oh, okay. So here's his little message. <laughs> Can you say testing, testing? Testing, testing, testing. <laughs> you talk into the microphone. You talk into the microphone. You, you talk into the microphone. <laughs> I talk there into the microphone. Good, 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 good. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm here with the world famous slag pot expert, uh, Bernie Sheba. Um, hi, Dad. How are you doing? Oh, so far so good. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for dinner. You're so welcome. <laughs> I, My pleasure. So we just wanted to surprise M um, and say hi and. Uh, I didn't even bring it up, but my mm-hmm. dad bought Em a couple little gifts. What? Little German-themed gifts. Oh, here it is. German soccer-themed. What? So I'm going to give those to Em on the episode. Here it is. It's a um, black you guys soccer rubber duck. Don't get duck. to meet until my wedding, basically. <laughs> I know it's to surprise Em, mm. but the first thing I need to say is you for sure surprised me. Because, yes, that's uh, what I do. I You're end welcome. Up in that, uh, and that's why we drink 
studio mm -hmm. yeah with somebody who never drank a drop of alcohol in <laughs> that's his me. life and i still feel that this and that's why we drink <laughs> podcast is just a slap in my face <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about what song to do as our father-daughter dance oh that's right yeah have you had any thoughts because i listened to about 30 songs today and none of them felt right Yeah, no, I'm not into dancing, as you know. Oh, so come I, on. You did, like, the freaking, what, waltz at your I wedding. Mean, <laughs> he <laughs> waltz. Crazy-ass waltz. Yeah, and he, then my mom so did the Austrian waltz. You should do what your dad did and oh, practice for eight weeks in an a eight-week studio. Austrian and I'm like, waltz. do you think Blaze looks like the type who's going to waltz with me? <laughs> yes. No. no. And they kicked me out after three weeks. They actually did kick him out. <laughs> Why? What's the name? Arthur Murray. Arthur right. Miller or Murray. I was just dismissed. I they paid dis for six sessions. People, and they, they kicked him out. Uh, yeah, they did. After Legitimately. Th after three and said I would never be able to handle that. And I fear that with Blaze, it <laughs> would take probably only one <laughs> lesson. <laughs> <laughs> But Dad, here's what you don't understand. That is a per you're kicking out after three weeks. It's the perfect beginning to a movie where you come back. And you show them how well you can dance. You know what I mean? Like, they'll kick you out of the dance studio. Thank you. Every dance movie. The streets. And then you come back. He was just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and everyone is so yeah. impressed. And you win a bunch of awards. I was doing it. But right at the time when I wanted to show everybody, uh -huh. I think I stepped on Elle's train or what's the name of this thing oh no i did oh no i, I did the, her 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 train of her her yeah, wedding gown that's, that's oh, he did oh dear mm -hmm. oh, i think she God. almost fell down but um well anyway thank you for joining us i also just want to have one last thing um do you have anything to say to m Right. Since you're sitting in M's current chair right now. Oh, oh yeah, that's You're right. sitting what in an M's honor. chair. What an honor. You're <laughs> no, sitting no, in the throne. No, really. what an honor for M. I'm oh. Oh. I want to say hello, M, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you uh, in Did October. Did you know M right? is officiating the wedding? Uh, right. Yes, okay. Uh, officiating, and, and I think there will be no booze or anything. <laughs> We'll all be very sober. Right. Uh -huh. And I think LOL. that the <laughs> gift, I, I brought that little gift, or one of the little gifts is that little black uh, magic duck. It's, a, right? it's, it's so a cool. It's a magic, magic duck, duck uh, from Germany. And um, I thought I uh, heard you guys quacking, uh, quacking, quacking? Uh, uh, quacking on the air. <laughs> It's like, mean. Quack, quack, quack. And I thought this is the perfect gift. You know? <laughs> He nailed it. <laughs> What reminds me of M? A duck. He nailed it. That's nice. It's very kind. A magical no, duck, mean, though. A magical duck. It, I think it will change its colors. Yeah, it yeah, does. M's going to like it, I think. When no. you take a bath or whatever. Yeah. I don't know how that When I take goes. a bath in my duck from we'll Bernie Schieffer. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But anyhow, no, I'm... I'm No, no kidding. So I'm. Really Y'all, Eva just hears me. us and not my dad's M, talking. Dad yeah. talking. So a piece she of just, my mind. Uh, she just regarding hears the f words. Oh, uh, what's we're wrong with the f? We're getting yelled at. We're yelled about cursing. Well, Hold on. It's, uh, how do you say that? I don't get the proper English right now for this thing here. That uh, it just uh, the amount of f words. Uh -huh. It's just it's fully astonishing. appropriate it's, uh, for the year we live in and for the, year, the society the, we are surrounded by. Probably, as far as I'm concerned, he's trying so hard. Uh, just say, just I won't saying. let him have it. Yeah. Right up there. That's true, except there's no. Uh, I don't think that I need to hold up any sort of decency for anybody that uh, that we talk about, especially because most of them are murderers. Oh, I don't well, find well, them to have valid. any sort of uh, you know need for decency. But you know, to each his own. Whatever floats your boat. Different strokes, different folks. Oh. <laughs> Somehow my dad still well listens said. to the first 10 <laughs> minutes of the show every week, and that's it. <laughs> that's right, to find out what you guys are doing. Yeah, Otherwise, to, fa to figure out know. if I've moved to a new house yeah, or not. Yeah, like I <laughs> found got, that out Gotten by a accident. new pet. That's yeah, you right. found out about the cat. Yeah. yeah, and I found out that you get married. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you find out all these things <laughs> by listening to He's that. calling you out, Christine. Oh, unbelievable how helpful this You're thing You're welcome. It's, yeah. like a bra it's like a newsletter to my family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like a Christmas card anyway, every week. Thank you for joining us obnoxious on our little fireside chat. Thank you. It was an honor and a pleasure. Off to Canada. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, That's right. and M's favorite country is Canada, oh, so I'm very That's jealous great. of him. You know that your great uncle, my uncle, was Canadian. You don't know that. No, I don't. I don't See? know that. I don't like how he goes. You don't cool. know that. M, I'm Canadian. Ago. Suck it. Ha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how does it I'm feel? Give M his gifts now. So. Okie dokie. Here you go. Okay. Bye, Love Daddy. You. Love bye you. Bye. Okay. So. So wait a minute. You're Canadian. Apparently, I'm Canadian. I don't know. Amazing. Oh, Eva missed all this. My my dad just revealed to me that my great uncle is Canadian. My great uncle was George Burns. So what? Are you serious? Yeah. And his wife was Grace Young. So my aunt. I don't know who. I don't know. I don't think I know who that is. The, From the George Burns I know and Grace Young show. Oh wait. Yeah. Oh my God. Who is this related to? My great uncle. Holy shit. Well, he went to my mom's grad high school graduation. Oh my god! He fell asleep at the table. <laughs> <laughs> that's me as an old person. <laughs> um, my dad got you this uh, weird duck that's like the Borussia Dortmund um, soccer team uh, duck. It's it starts out black and then it is like uh, heat heat sensitive, yeah, and when you, take, you touch it, it becomes yellow. If you put it in the bathtub, it becomes yellow. A little yellow rubber ducky. Yeah, I tried reading the box at first. But it's in German. Mm. So I really had to figure this one out on my own. Um, I think you did a great job. Um, also, sorry that was so long. I skipped to the end at the end there. But You're fine. Uh, Your dad was so nice. He, he was nice until he was just like denying any culpability about Right. Mr. He didn't want Chatfield. you to be right. He didn't want you to be right. No, he didn't. And uh, he's the one who tells me about Mr. Chatfield. So he didn't want me to put him on the spot, I guess. But <sighs> that's the story. That's who that's that's the, the man, the legend, the myth you know whatever order that's supposed to go in mm. um anyway loved it how are you why do you drink this week what's up um i drink because i had a dream uh-huh um uh, i guess more of a creepy dream oh god that was my nose by the way my cl- uh, oh nose. i don't like that it sounds like a dog with I think allergies it's, my nose is itchy but i can't scratch it take that thing off <laughs> um when i so i had a dream that i was in a uh that i was reaching my hand into a freezer oh god but i couldn't see into the back of the freezer it was like a void and so i stuck my hand in there and then i felt someone else grab my <gasps> hand from the other side and then as if they were like successfully pulling me in i felt them grab my arm cl- like further and further and pull me further and further in and i could feel my body lifting in the dream like I could feel my like body they were actually pulling getting pulled you into up it and pulling and pulling and pulling until they got to my shirt and then they were like pulling near my neck and then I woke up and I was actually sitting up in bed <laughs> which was just the creepiest Ew! Um, I'm also and too- then and peels his fucking nose off <laughs> <laughs> and then I peeled my claw nose off so gross um oh, wait you were sitting up in bed yes that's not okay. In the middle of the night and this was the first night in a while that Allison hasn't spent the night I just so got like full body chills. I was like it, of course it was three in the morning of course it was um and allison wasn't there and mm-hmm. it was just very frightening so all i had to do was go back to bed so lord wasn't fun um so that happened and then eva made a good point of like uh you said something about like you would have just woken up and like move into another room or like left and like gone to like the couch outside i couldn't do that either because one of the other main reasons that I drink this week is because we now have a homeless woman what that bangs on my door at what ran this last night was the second time this has happened. She aggressively like not like what like basically like how Tamara from the strangers would knock on a door like I'm going to oh your worst nightmare great like she literally like she went like bang knocking and but like that was like a lot more quiet like it like was joltingly loud and alarming she just does it on your front door well she did it and at the the first time allison was over and nobody else was home so you're like oh maybe it's one of the roommates and they can't get in the house and it was like you know that tune where like everyone does like it's me right Mm -hmm. and so we looked out the window because it it wasn't no one had ever knocked on the door like that before so we were like we don't know who it is and Allison was like, don't open the door because it sounded usually is the one who opens the door. So then she looked out the eye hole and it looked like it was our roommate, Christine. And uh, since it looked kind of like the silhouette of Christine, Allison opens the door. Speaking of which, classic Allison. 
Because I said, I can't tell who that is. And then she was like, it looks like Christine. And then opens the door. Oh, no. And this homeless woman is like, hello, I am a homeless woman. Can I please steal your towel that's on the porch to sleep on the ground with? Because we have a like a camp chair and a towel outside on the sure. porch. And we were like, yeah, do you want to take the chair too? like just get off the just get away. I mean, it's nice like, that she asked instead of just stealing your towel. Yeah, so it's like still. it's like still jarring. Yeah. I'm like, I wish you kind of just stole the towel. <laughs> just but so, take the towel. But so you're like, oh, well, you can you can have the chair too. Like if you want like a chair to sleep on, sure. so you're not sleeping on the ground. And she was like, no, thank you. I don't want the chair. And then she was like, I'm going to take your towel now. And then grab the towel and then left. But she was she just did it so alarmingly. And also, not only that, but. Um, the screen window to the front of the house has looked like it has been tampered with and oh, someone tried to get in. No. And people, someone has been ripping open our packages. No. Um, so like now I have to get everything shipped to work, but like someone has been going through all of our stuff and like tearing apart the package and like fit, like messing around with what's they going on in the boxes. touch your fucking hello fresh. I swear <laughs> to God. But so like that plus that plus that, I was just like really... And then you wake up Jolted. sitting up in bed at night. Yeah. No. And then, yeah, exactly. So I was like, no. I don't want to be on the couch because the homeless woman might look through the window. Because we have like those weird blinds that like you can still kind of see, see through. In. Nope. Nope. No, so no, I was no, like, no, 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 no. I was like, no. I don't want to sleep in, in the living room and I don't want to be in my room. It was Abs- just a very. absolutely fucking lutely not. Jarring night. Anyway, um, why do you drink? Oh my God. I drink because every member of my family has been here in the last four weeks and it's been really awesome. And honestly, they've helped me out a lot, but. It's been really hot. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of people in my house. Ugh, yeah. Gio hurt his paw. Aww. I'm just really tired always. Right. Um, I just am so tired. <laughs> well, Gio does look so handsome without his cone of shame. I know. He's very He's so really, happy. Well, the day that he could finally run again, he just, my sister walked outside and he just ran around her for like 40 minutes and we just all stood there and watched and he just like ran and ran and ran until he tired himself out. So Aww. he's he's much better. Well, I am. I also drink because, like, uh, real soon is my bachelorette party. <gasps> yes. Everyone in this room is going except you. Well, Gio's not going. Gio's not going, yeah. Um, but it's going to be really fun. Yeah. I'm planning it, so Em's planning it's going to be fun. So better you. <laughs> no, I'm planning it, so I know it's going to be fun. Um, and uh, hats off to Al- uh, to M, Alice, and to everybody else who's helped out to blaze's aunt lisa who like hooked us up with nice rooms and apparently we're going to the chippendales which i'm just trying not to think about because it just gives me so much anxiety but (laughs) it'll be fun um and then we're going to freaking nashville yes the week after oh boy so we're just kind of dragging eva all over the place you poor eva (laughs) this is your life now you get to go to bachelorette parties in nashville oops (laughs) um anyway so that's what i got for you okay but you guys oh we released a couple more vip tickets for nashville so if you haven't gotten yours yet please go check it out um there's a few left also some left for our hollywood show in september and dc yep 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 okay eva do you have a reason you drink or no i'm gonna i'm gonna (laughs) reiterate that it's been too hot so hot it's been so hot like 115 the other day (sighs) so hot it's been uh at my work i work out in the valley and I got in my car and it said 121 and it was That's just stupid. It was like so hot. It was cold. That's, I like, couldn't there was figure a day, it out. Was yeah. Well, I was like, yeah, like heat goosebumps. There was a day where I started shivering and I realized I'd walked two miles and it was 116 out. And I was like, I was like, I'm cold. And I was like, that's not good because that means i'm probably gonna die and so <laughs> i forced myself to go drink water but man it has been rough and i know a lot of people in the whole world who are listening to this are like yeah we know we're also doing that so props to you and everyone and everyone's gonna say well at least it's safe. a dry heat we don't you don't have to deal with humidity which is true we've dealt with that too but also we live out in the desert so but also we live in la and we like to complain so just let us do it Thank we got you. a podcast because we wanted to complain. So if you're going to complain that we're complaining too much, then you can complain to someone else. Elsewhere on your own podcast. This is a place where everyone gets to complain and no one gets to complain about it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, that's all I want in life. Okay, cool. Tell me a ghost story. Okay. 
Hey, um, yeah. Well, so here's the thing. I have scoops for you. Oh, tell me the scoop. So when it comes, it's about wine. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. When it comes You're to. You're really just telling yourself. I'm telling me. me. Yeah. When it comes to buying wine, most of our choices are made out of habit and we don't remember how we found our favorites. We just know that when we're at checkout, those same brands and bottles are in our carts week after week. I just like, I go to the store and I'm like, oh no, it's back. <laughs> More boxed wine. No, oh. no control. Oh, I have to drink it until it's gone, but then it comes back. So I have to keep drinking. It's like a, a cycle that never ends. Right. Well, at least now you don't have to go to the store because there's First Leaf. It's a new online wine club that's putting a stop to boring wine buying like you've had. You're so boring. And it helps you discover your new favorite wines that are not in a box, Christine. I need, it's about time. Every shipment is curated to your taste based on your ratings of the wines. So what happened was I started by answering three quick questions about my wine drinking preferences. And then First Leaf created an introductory three pack of wine for me based on my flavor profile. The best part is I got all three for just $5 each and the wines go for like 20 a piece. So it was a pretty good deal. When my bottles arrived, I would I tasted them and then I was able to rate them online, sort of like Pandora. And then First Leaf took those ratings and uh, curated a new box with new wines based on my taste for my next shipment. You just wanted to say box. Box of wine. Box of wine. Box, box of, of wines. Box it's even of, better. Box of bottled wines. Yes. Their experts are constantly exploring new wines for people like Christine, who drink quite often, right. to taste and rate. I feel attacked. <laughs> After rating my first three wines, I got a shipment, and it was pretty much perfect. I liked all the wines, um, had no complaints. Well, there you go. There you go. And the shipments only uh, get better with the more wines that you're going to rate. That's right. So with First Leaf, you never have to worry about spending money on a bad bottle of wine because they guarantee you'll love the wine you buy or they'll give you your money back. So try First Leaf Wine Club today, where buying great wine is simple. Sign up with our personal link, and you'll get an exclusive intro offer. It's three bottles of wine for only $15, plus free shipping. And that's not all. If you rate these wines, you're also going to get an extra $10 off your next box. So just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. That's tryfirstleaf.com slash drink. Hello? Fresh. Yeah, what's that? (laughs) (laughs) HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. There are three plans to choose from. There's the classic, the veggie, and the family. And each box is made up of fresh, responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high-rated, trusted sources. You can look forward to your HelloFresh delivery knowing dinner just got that much easier. You can feel confident when you're cooking HelloFresh with the simple recipes outlined on pictured, ooh, step-by-step instruction (laughs) cards. We need pictures to know what we're doing. (laughs) All the ingredients uh, come pre-measured in handy labeled meal kits so you know which ingredients go with which recipe. And you won't spend all night in the kitchen because recipes only take around... 30 minutes you can spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and get that time back to do more of what you love which is napping and watching trash tv and playing with giovanni oh so get out of that recipe rut and start cooking outside of your comfort zone by discovering new delicious recipes in each week's box i will tell you every time that i have hello fresh i have such a delicious meal waiting for me at the end it takes no time at all it's just so easy it makes my life so much it's e- so easy and it's good food <clears throat> well every time that I think I'm going to get healthy again, um, which you don't have to laugh about um, because I did it for you. I just (laughs) sipped some wine. I didn't say anything. But I always think, okay, I'm going to meal prep. I'm going to meal prep. And then it never ends up working. And then I also don't want to cook every day. So it's nice to have HelloFresh, you know, show up and I don't have to get the ingredients. I don't have to figure out what I'm making. It's just already right there for me. And you know it's good food. And it's always good. I've never been disappointed. No. Um, we, Blaze and I have turned HelloFresh nights into like date nights because we're like, we'll just cook dinner together. And it's fun because like you don't have to stress about what to buy, go to the grocery store. I just come home from work and I'm like, let's make dinner together. And we make dinner and it's always easy, always delicious. For $30 off of your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com slash drink30 and enter drink30. That's $30 off your first week of HelloFresh by visiting HelloFresh.com slash drink30 and enter drink30. <laughs> Pull it out of your pocket. I have man pockets, so like they could have just ran away. It's like so deep down there. <laughs> They're in the abyss. I really put my whole hand in the po- in the pocket, and I was like, I can't find them, and I had to go even further into the pocket. Keep digging. I had to keep digging. All right. <clears throat> Hair. Sorry. You look marvelous, darling. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, this is when I started a while ago, like probably a couple months ago, and I just never got back. I moved on. And now I'm moving back. Intriguing. I'm back on my bullshit. <laughs> um, it's like that ex you never forgot about. Uh, who? 
<laughs> I don't know. The ex, that was a ghost story. I don't know. Just go with it. It's too hot to think straight. It is really hot, and we have to do a whole episode. Sorry. Here. Are you okay over there? Yeah, the fan was blowing the notes do you want everywhere. Me to turn it down? No, it's too, oh. no, no. Okay. No, we're going to make that work. Okay, so this is in Savannah, Georgia. Mm. This is in a town in Savannah called Old Fort. Listen, I love Savannah, Georgia. Me too. Beautiful. And uh, the place is called the Pirate House. <gasps> Never heard of it. Okay, cool. Me either. I almost just ate the microphone. Mm, My yum. face is so close. Okay. So the Pirate House is a tavern restaurant. Love it already. Um, it is one block from the Savannah River on East Broad Street, in case anyone wants to go there. I do. Okay. Um, maybe another time. Uh, it was built in 1753, which makes it the oldest building in Savannah. Uh, however, it was addressed to me in my notes via Google that... Although it is modern day, it still has the feel of the 1800s, Aww. which I enjoy. I feel like that's cool. Yeah. So it started out as one house that was called the Herb House because there, people were um, doing a lot of gardening on the land originally. They made an Herb House, ended up not really working out as an Herb House. They kept building additions to it and it eventually turned into a restaurant. Okay. So because they connected so many small additions onto this one small house it turned into a big restaurant and so there are supposedly 15 different separate dining rooms on the first floor because they just kept connecting buildings and what? buildings and so it just expanded into this big dining room but instead of one big it's just 15 separate yeah like all the walls come from different houses <laughs> apparently <laughs> okay um so the first floor is the tavern and the second floor was the inn where people spent the night it also in my notes said where men spent the night which makes me think women weren't welcome in inns unless it was like a brothel or something yeah that was my first thought but i don't know i don't know that was what google said so don't get mad at me okay i'll um, try <clears throat> so there's a stairway clearly which leads from the first floor to the second floor people cannot fly so they needed stairs so there are stairs oh wow thank you for that explanation. you're welcome um for many decades since the 1920s and then for many decades after that there was a jazz bar on the second floor called the Hard Hearted Hannah's. That's fun. Um, which was upstairs, and the upstairs now is blocked off from guests. It is used for storage. Um, in the basement, there was a brick tunnel, which was big enough to drive a bus through, apparently. What? That was the, <laughs> the proportions the I got. Point? <laughs> it's like, you could drive a bus through there in the 1750s. Um, a bus was just a horse. Yeah, <laughs> you could drive a hundred horses through there. <laughs> the tunnel, however, is now bricked over at both ends, so you can't actually go through the tunnel at all. Oh, um, but it's rumored at one point to have hid dead bodies during the yellow fever epidemic from the public. Oh, good. And it was uh, rumored to be one of the hideouts during the Underground Railroad. Oh shit, that's pretty cool. The tunnel was originally used, your favorite, as a rum cellar. That and the undergrad. I mean, I'm not going to say I like the rum more than the... Than Harriet Tubman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not going to say that. I, you would like having rum I with Harriet like Tubman. they're a good pairing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You can always pair Harriet Tubman with some, some good booze. rum. Yeah, agreed. And so it was a rum cellar, but it was also used by outlaw privateers to smuggle liquor into the city. Oh, but I like that too, so add that. Okay. So like a triple thing. Triple threat. Triple threat. Sure. Like you're... In the Venn diagram middle of, like, Harriet Tubman. Mm, sure. And she privateers got smuggling in liquor. Yep. And then rum is over there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so, you are the rum, I think. You're just swimming in it in the middle of the Venn diagram. I'm just in the middle of the rum pool. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got, got it. it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So the house... Oh, my God. A rum diagram. Just kidding. I'm sorry. That wasn't funny. <laughs> a Venn diagram. Ah! That's it. I'm sorry. You win. Okay. <laughs> so the... Uh, even though it's called the Pirate's House, it should be called the Privateer's House because once it was built, pirates had actually already been chased out of the area by the British Navy. Mm. So no pirates were ever there. It was like the pirates, I guess, had already moved to less civilized waters such as India. Oh, sure. And, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. oh, so it was, it should have been called the Privateer's House because privateers uh, were regularly staying there and it was an inn and tavern that says it was meant for merchants and sailors, but it was mainly privateers who went there. And privateers were actually worse than pirates because the privateers were basically legal pirates. Oh. 
So with the English government giving them permission, they were allowed to raid ships, kill the crew, sell the ship, and then give a percentage what? to the government. That this was legal. Yeah. Fuck. So there was one French privateer named Jean Lafitte. Mm. Um, I've heard of that guy. Have you? Yeah. But I think it was literally in Savannah. Oh, weird. On like a tour or something. Well, he had a deal with the British. He was one of the French privateers that was allowed to do this for the British, which was kind of unheard of at the time. Right. I think. Um, I'm not too sure. I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't know either, to be honest. <clears throat> um, but so he was one of the people who was regularly at the inn. So they think one of the spirits might be him because he was there oh. so often because it was also an inn. So he stayed there for weeks at a time. Right. Um, he also did so well at being a privateer and helping out the British government that he ended up earning his own home in New Orleans. That was apparently so fantastical that oh boy. Robert Louis Stevenson was inspired by that house and wrote a segment of his novel on Shut it in Treasure Island. Up. So his house, the house was somehow a inspiration for Treasure Holy Island. Holy shit. Um, he also based some of the characters of Treasure Island on the privateers that would come in and out of the pirate house, including Captain Flint. No way. So Flint died of drinking too much alcohol in the story, and he died while shouting out, Darby McGraw fetch the rum. Ironically, <laughs> there is a spirit who is nicknamed Captain Flint, and there have been uh, reports of people hearing someone moaning for more rum. Oh, rum. That is Christine's ghost in the future. That's just me sleeping. When Imagine I... if your future ghost haunted your present. Oh, future. Oh, we've talked about this. Remember? I know we've, we've talked, talked about, it a lot about if we were dead. I think about it a lot, and we haunt ourselves. Well, my thought is always like when you get like those gut feelings that you shouldn't do something. Yeah. I always think that it's actually my future ghost coming and like, but don't you feel punching like your me in the future gut? Future ghost is like whatever. I'm already dead. I don't care about my live self. Maybe I don't know. It's hard to say. Like I feel like my future self would want to fuck with my current self. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I know I would want to fuck with myself somehow. And if time travel's involved, I'm going to do it. I mean, I would want to fuck with you as a dead ghost. Thank you. No, nice. I don't mean it in that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I the, mean, no matter what, uh, thank you. No matter what, it's a compliment. I want to... Oh, God. You want to fuck with me. It's, it's fine. It's too hot. Everyone ship it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's too hot. Okay. So. It's so hot that your stupid duck won't turn back to black. It's stuck at yellow <laughs> or it's stuck at weird, dirty, gross green. You can text your dad all about that and be like, the duck is doing fine out of water. It's We're not still doing changing fine, colors. but the duck is. Um, so, like I said, the privateers, they had a, quote, letter of mark, which granted them legal rights to raid ships and then kill the people on the ships and then sell the ships. Oh, cute. For a okay. profit. Really great. Uh, they were this. Oh, OK. So the pirate house was seen as a place that most citizens were afraid to go to because not just because of the dangerous people who were there, but what the dangerous people would do to them if they went into the tavern. Oh, uh, OK. So, um, like I said, m it was mainly English and French privateers that would come in here and they were very violent men and they thought they were above the law because technically they were. And there were uh, privateer captains who they had trouble recruiting privateers because it was such a dangerous job that they regularly needed to force people to join their, their little groups. So there was this practice called crew impressment. Oh, God. Where innocent people like you or me uh, could go into the bar if you're just like a citizen of Savannah and want to get a drink. They were always at risk because if they drank too much... Mm then they could end up getting drugged or knocked on the head and go unconscious. Basically, they would also try to get people drunk, like, oh, let's play a drinking game and get them really drunk and then or make like them unconscious them or, something. or roofie them. And uh, would they basically they would wake up on a ship a hundred what? Like hundreds of miles offshore. What and the they fuck? would find out that they had been Shanghai. And Oh my God. They would be sold to captains for an average of thirteen dollars. And what then, the fuck? And then um, they were forced to work on the ship or, or else they would be thrown overboard. What? Well, th uh, so there's stories of like... They just wanted to go get a fucking <laughs> rum and coke and then all of a sudden... <laughs> they wanted their Venn diagram. They just... <laughs> and look where they ended up. So stupid. There's one uh, story of a cop from Savannah who went, to get a get, went in to get a drink uh -huh. and he ended up waking up in China... And oh. they forced him to work for two years before he found his way back to Savannah. As a cop? How scary is that? Jesus. Well, he was a cop and was like, this is illegal. And they were like, 
well they're like great you're in china now it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah and also say. we're above the law and also there's more of us and also there's the plank you can walk it if you don't want to work for us for two years Jeez, that is horrifying. The basement with the tunnel that is now blocked up, although it was supposed to be a rum cellar, uh, it was used to transport these men while they were unconscious to waiting ships in need of sailors. Oh my gosh, so they would just take, like, they would just bring them downstairs, just drag their unconscious bodies downstairs, and then get them on a ship and sell them off while they're still unconscious. And then when they wake up, they've already been sold Jesus. to a captain, and now they're a privateer. How fucked up, dude. So the French privateers, there were um, there were two French ships that were in town one night that came to port, and on on the way to rob South America, you know how that is. Yeah. God, if I haven't been there a million times. <laughs> and while they were there, they tried to recruit or impress um, some American citizens. Sure. And two American sailors were pissed about that, and it led to some friction between the two groups, and basically... They all got in a knife fight, and two American sailors and one French sailor died. Fuck. On the property. So, there's that. This place is also considered a house museum by the American Museum Society, and is also still on some of the best restaurant lists in Savannah. Oh, that's good. So, that's nice. It saved some of its uh, grandeur, I guess. So, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna go through the ghost stuff. Yeah, please. It's not a lot. This was a quick one, but a good one, I think. It's good. It's I, good. I apologize. It's not mine's as pretty, lengthy. Mine's pretty long, so. You know, I feel like we always do that where we I'm like, do. Christine, I'm sorry. The story isn't very long. And you're like, good, because I got a fucking novel. Because I wasn't so. going to say anything, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the ghost stuff. Okay. There is drunk, joyful laughter heard from the second floor. Oh, that's just me. That's Christine. There I am. Hello. Uh, employees see apparitions of uh, ghosts walking through the upstairs, like in, into all the different rooms. Good. When the upstairs was used as a jazz club, apparently the coffee pot would throw itself against the wall. Oh. With or without hot coffee. Someone doesn't. <laughs> so sometimes you just had to dodge it. Someone does not like jazz music. I, that was me. Oh, um, um, oh boy. Oh, no. Oh, boy. I just never got into it. I'm La sorry. La Land? You didn't watch that? No, no comment. Um, on the second floor and the basement, there is a scar-faced ghost oh. of a rough privateer. And that's the one nicknamed Captain Flint. A rough privateer. A rough one. As opposed to the softies. The smooth ones. Uh, Flint, as they call him, uh, roams the walled off tunnel and has been seen walking into the tunnel. Like walking into the wall. Oh, to the blocked off. Yeah. Uh, On the first floor, there is a strange presence that has been felt on the stairs. There has been an apparition of an angry man dressed in 18th century seaman (laughs) uh, garb. And he is seen walking through the dining rooms in the kitchen. He has an intimidating bully vibe. What a jerk. And he has... (laughs) This one's kind of wild. The cook apparently saw him from across the room, like a (laughs) rom-com. He walked up to the cook when he was noticed. Walked up to him. Oh, oh no. Glared at him nose to nose in the face. And then he turned to leave and he faded away as he left. But the cook... I guess he was wearing like a long jacket, this, this angry ghost. He was wearing a long jacket. As he turned, his coattails hit the cook, and the <gasps> cook could feel the coattails hit him. Ew. Like, it was like a hard, leathery coattail that hit him that swung when the guy turned. That's fucked up. And then the ghost faded away. So, like, for a second, he was like, that thing was as real. It was, real like, as- physically yeah. in front of me. Yeah. In dining rooms, the place settings rearrange themselves after people leave for the night. Um, a cop went down to the basement and saw... This is a good one. Oh, boy. We'll never hear this again. <laughs> the cop went down to the basement and saw ghosts of men carrying a drunk ghost man. <laughs> and somehow the ghost world was like, we need to imprint this. Imagine on the real like world. being drunk for eternity. Okay, don't think about that, Christine. <laughs> what do you think I imagine on like, a daily what, basis? What do you think my vision board is for the afterlife? <laughs> yeah. um, no, but so that is. It's wild. also kind of a sad story because that means he was watching oh, basically being taken the recreation of a drunk man not knowing where he's going, getting dragged I into the tunnel. If that's why the energy of it was so like strong. so strong. Yeah. yeah, that's fucked up. But so he apparently saw a ghost man that was definitely drunk getting carried out by two How other sober terrifying. men. Terrifying. Uh, they were. He was carried through the basement, across the room, and then through the blocked up wall, which means he was getting dragged through the tunnel. Through the tunnel. Um. A waitress also went down to the basement, and she said she felt very dizzy and sick to her stomach, and she couldn't stop feeling sick, so she went back upstairs. Whenever she went to work after that day, just walking into the main room, she would feel that sick again. Oh, no. 
Um, apparently a psychic went into the restaurant and didn't know her story, but found her and said that there are entities here and they are punishing you for snooping around the tunnel. <gasps> oh man, that's creepy. Cause that means they're like aware. They're aware of that what's happening. That creeps me out so much. Um, the paranormal ghost hunters of North Georgia. Uh, there was an investigator during one of their lockdowns that felt something try to take his flashlight out of his pocket. He said he could feel it getting pulled out and he thought one of his, one of the other investigators was pulling a prank on him. He turned around and no one was there, but he could feel the flashlight still getting pulled out of his pocket. Oh God. He grabbed the flashlight right before it would have fallen to the ground and his hand became colder and colder until the flashlight felt frozen. Ugh. Um, another angry sailor ghost stares at you from the bottom of the stairs up while you're standing on the second floor. No. Which is just the most intimidating. No, I don't like that at all. Because then you're trapped upstairs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Chairs in only one section of the restaurant get rearranged every night, and staff have heard them moving from other rooms. How irritating would that be if you work there? Imagine if you just cleaned all of the tables God. and all of the chairs and all, and then you go into another room and you can hear chairs dragging God. across the floor. And you're like new there and you're like, my boss is just going to be pissed that I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, how irritating. Um, when staff are working alone, they report feeling several people are watching them. Some say that the feeling is so strong it leaves them paralyzed and they can feel breath on the side of their face. Ugh. Many have said that a seaman uh-huh, <laughs> standing and f- has been standing in front of them, staring at them, and then fades away. Uh, a lot of people have also seen the apparition of a so- uh, sailor, sorry, of a sailor standing next to them, shoulder to shoulder, so they can just feel someone press, like leaning against them. Yeah. Um, apparently, this sailor they can also smell liquor on his breath. Oh God. Uh, there are footsteps of sailor boots against plank floors, so you can hear like their feet dragging. Right. Um, you can also hear sailor shanties being sung from basement and up from the basement and upstairs when nobody is there. Fun. Uh, I I love hearing grown men chanting when I'm alone. Oh, my favorite. People walking past the house have reported seeing people in 18th century garb walking up through the rooms upstairs. It's like they look into the window and see like people in 18th century clothes walking around and no one's up there. People have heard tables falling over as if they got, like, flipped over. God, these are, like, some really aggressive ghosts. And then they go into the room and nothing's actually been touched. Oh, So they just hear the sounds of it. Uh, You can smell cigar smoke in uh, the restaurant area, even though smoking's no longer allowed. And people have heard men in the basement say, where am I? (gasps) As in, like, the unconscious ones. Oh, fuck. See, that's so messed up. Um, They have also heard other voices... They've heard multiple men's voices saying, grab him by the feet. <gasps> and then you can Holy hear... Holy shit. And then you can hear heavy dragging down the stairs. Holy shit. Like they're dragging a body down the stairs. I'm going to be honest. I just keep thinking, like, if they were doing this to grown men, like, sorry, what were they doing to women? Like, yeah. how yeah. how horrifying that it's so easy for them to just, like, do this and drag them to other countries. Anyway. Jesus. Well, continue. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, guests at the restaurant have seen other guests... This is the wild one. Yeah. Guests at the restaurant, you and me at a restaurant, have seen guests at other tables dressed from another time period eating from period plates and food that is not on the menu. And they're like, I'll have what she's having. And everyone's like, (laughs) it's not a funny joke. (laughs) They will double take and look back to see a present day dressed family. Oh, so they like replace. Yeah. Sometimes they will look back and nobody's there at all. And Mm -hmm. nobody has disturbed the table or the present day plateware. That is creepy. So they'll just like all of a sudden hallucinate. I like, just want to know what they're like a eating. time travel. <laughs> I just want to know what the turkey legs about. I just want to know. Staff also will come in early to prep for the day or when they're closing. Um, so either beginning or end of the night, they will hear people in the dining rooms as if someone came in before the place is open and they'll go in and nobody's in there, but they can still hear multiple men having conversations Ugh. with each other. Um, there are electrical surge surgeries please there, no no <laughs> None there of that. are electrical surges and new equipment or new equipment will not work um evps have included who are you Mm-mm. what are you wearing and can you hear me yet yet oh god that is so creepy em um one time a staff member said that all the electronics turned on by themselves some of which were unplugged uh-uh. or not working beforehand 
Staff have also said that they have looked out into the restaurant and it looked like it was packed and then they blink and half the people have vanished. Staff will go upstairs to tell patrons that they cannot be up there, but then they realize that nobody had actually gone upstairs. They just followed an apparition. Uh, Menus will go missing. Cups will move themselves from shelf to shelf. And you can still hear jazz music from upstairs where the club used to be. That's kind of nice. There are sounds of glasses falling from the bar and hitting the ground. Oh, when nothing has actually happened and there's no shattered glass and none of the cups are missing. And same with the sounds of bar stools dragging across the floor. There is the sound of a man loudly slurring his words and uh, <laughs> just very drunk. Okay. And the sounds of a person heavily and drunkenly staggering from one side of the room to the other. Oh, and you're like, you don't know where to dodge it yeah you just just hear hear you just hear a drunk man coming towards you (laughs) and that's it oh the (laughs) ends on the staggering drunk man yeah how creepy what's it called again the pirate house in savannah in savannah wow you know eva posted the uh road trip bucket list today that Mm -hmm. we're doing um we got some savannas on there and i was like i know one day we'll be able to do that i would love to do that it's just it's just an idea for now but fingers crossed it's a vision board it is it's a haunted vision board hey christine oh my god hey good seeing you i didn't see you from across the table over there so we i did but i wanted to play it coy oh yeah yeah, yeah. you didn't know how what i how i would react hey remember that time that we lived in boston and we were two friends that decided to make a podcast yeah, remember when we lived in Boston and didn't speak to each other? Okay, well, this story is different. There are two other friends, but instead of Boston, they lived in New York. Oh. And instead of making a podcast, they made uh, Luggage with Power. No, oh, I'm sorry I ruined that intro. That's so cute. Oh, thank you. So there were two friends in New York, and they found themselves at JFK with dead phones, delayed flights, and a bright idea, which was the Away Carry-On. <gasps> Away uses high-quality materials while offering a much lower price compared to other brands by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you. They are first-class luggage at a coach price. You can choose from a variety of colors and four sizes, the carry-on, the bigger carry-on, the medium, or the large for extended stays. Uh, They have some awesome key design features. For example, all suitcases are made with premium German polycarbonate. (laughs) unrivaled in strength and impact resistance are you just talking about yourself now (laughs) yes unrivaled in strength very lightweight as you know me very lightweight uh very strong you are a lightweight but i wish (laughs) unfortunately i'm really not um the interior also features a patent pending compression system which is helpful for overpackers aka me just saying they have four 360 degree spinner wheels guaranteed for a smooth ride oh they have tsa approved combination locks built into the top of the bags to prevent theft and they have a removable washable laundry bag that keeps dirty clothes separate from clean the best part is that of all of this yeah the take away if you will is that you can charge your phone into this suitcase when were we gonna say it it takes your breath away Away. it takes your dead phone battery away there is a lifetime warranty if anything breaks they will fix or replace it and there is a 100-day trial for you to live with it, vibe with it, travel with it, Instagram it. Gram it. And if at any point you decide that you don't want a suitcase that charges your phone, they dummy, will give dummy, you a dummy. full refund, no questions asked. Free shipping on any way order within the lower 48 states, not Alaska, sorry, bye. Carry-on <laughs> sizes that are compliant with all major U.S. airlines while maximizing the amount you can pack. And if you're in town, please visit Away at the retail store in New York City. Listen, we got an Away suitcase, we got the carry-on, and it in is... Navy. Bagan. Bagan? No, I, I was going to say bangin' and then you said navy and it threw me off. Bagan strips. <laughs> <laughs> it fits all of Geo's snacks. I for the love road. a way like Geo loves bagan strips. That's exactly what we were Ringing sp- endorsement. That's what's on this paper, actually. Guys, we're super stoked to be using a way. We're definitely going to be using their suitcases when we go to our live shows in Nashville and DC. We and are. And beyond. And beyond. Yes. So if you guys want to get on board, um, and use get your own away uh, for twenty dollars off your suitcase. Visit awaytravel.com slash drink and use promo code drink during checkout. That's twenty dollars off of your suitcase if you go to awaytravel.com slash drink. Yes. Drink and use promo code drink during checkout. 
I don't know about you guys, but um, I've worn glasses for most of my life and buying glasses can be expensive, annoying and overwhelming above all else. So thank God Warby Parker exists and Warby Parker has the answer. By cutting out the middleman and selling directly to customers online and in their stores, Warby Parker is able to provide high quality, great looking eyewear at a fraction of the usual price. In fact, their prescription glasses start at just $95, believe it or not, which includes frames, lenses and coatings. Uh, The people behind Warby Parker feel that glasses should not cost more than your phone, which, I mean, obviously me too. They ship to you for free and it includes prepaid return shipping label. So you can just head to warbyparker.com slash drink to order your free home try on today. The glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses and lenses include anti-glare and anti-scratch coating. So really it's a win-win-win. Basically what happens is you get five pairs of glasses shipped directly to your door um, and it's the ones that you think will look best on you or the, the styles you really like the most. And then you can try them on in the comfort of your own home and you can get feedback from your friends, your family, your colleagues, the mailman or male woman um and also maybe don't harass strangers but you know if you want their opinion why not um anyone whose opinion counts you can ask them what they think and then after five days you can send the glasses back and they give you a free prepaid return shipping label which is great so there's no obligation to purchase it's 100 percent free and it's so easy a dog could do it (laughs) Except maybe, maybe not Geo. I don't know. I don't want to put that pressure on him. But, um, you know, you can try on all five glasses and decide which ones look best on you, which ones the mailman likes or male woman likes most on you. Um, and for every pair of glasses sold, this is even more exciting. Uh, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need, which is super important to me. And that I just think that's a really cool part of their program. Go to warbyparker.com slash drink and place your home try on order. Make sure to download the Warby Parker app from the iTunes app store. And they built this awesome home try on companion feature, which allows you to quickly take photos wearing all the frames, stitch it into a video and share it with friends and family. It's honestly brilliant. So once you find a pair of glasses you like, go to warbyparker.com slash drink and order your favorite pair. They'll even call your doctor if you don't have your prescription handy, which sounds like something right down my alley. Go to Warby. That's W-A-R-B-Y Parker dot com slash drink to get started with a free home try on. That's Warby Parker dot com slash drink to find your perfect pair of glasses today. All right. I hope you enjoy those commercials. They were really good and helpful to the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're doing the Lord's work. This. Oh. Yep. OK. Lord Byron's work. OK. OK. I'm so hot. I feel like I'm having a fever dream. OK. I think, I think she is Eva. Um, This is the story of the disappearance of Shannon Matthews. Okay, I don't know her. Great. So, this takes place in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, England. Okay. In 2008. Ooh, recent. Ten years ago. Recent. Uh Uh-oh. On February 19th, 2008, nine-year-old Shannon Matthews uh, begins the half-mile trek from school to her house. And that day was actually a really exciting day for her because at school they had their first swim practice ever. And it was, she was in year four and they had their first swim practice. And so she'd been looking forward to this day for ages. So she had just gotten out of swim practice and she was about to walk home from school. But unfortunately, she never arrived at home. That evening around 6.48 p.m., her mother, 32-year-old Karen Matthews, called the police to report Shannon missing. So the West Yorkshire police instigated after, you know, asking her questions and kind of making sure this wasn't a normal behavior uh they instigated a 200 person search for shannon led by detective superintendent andy brennan all in all police questioned 1500 motorists and searched 3,000 houses and by march 5th a couple weeks later more than 250 officers and 60 detectives were involved in the investigation making it the largest police investigation since the yorkshire ripper case 30 years earlier whoa okay yeah so literally since the 70s they had not had such a big they actually utilized 10 percent of the entire local like a regional police force just on this case alone like completely dedicated to this case okay cool and it cost but yeah yeah it cost approximately 3.2 million pounds the whole investigation um so the newspaper the sun offered a reward of 20,000 pounds (laughs) i wrote (laughs) what happened i wrote lb's (laughs) pounds (laughs) Well, I probably weigh that much. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm such a dumbass. 
Uh, I think I was too lazy to find, like, the pound symbol. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. And I was too lazy to write pounds. I thought you were laughing at, like, the fact that this was in, like, European currency, because I was like... Like, ha-ha, pounds? Like, ha-ha, it's not in dollars. I just realized I wrote LBs, like... (laughs) I mean, that's how I probably would have done it, too, if we're being honest. I just was like, that looks weird for some reason. Okay. You read it pretty fluently, though. Yeah, I was like, yeah, 20,000 pounds, but that's not right. Okay, (laughs) yes, so the money, not the weight. Mm. Uh, 20,000 pounds is not quite a reward if you're talking LBs, as far as as I'm concerned. So they offered a reward of 20,000 pounds um, for information leading to Shannon's safe return, and after 20 days of her still being missing, they increased the reward to 50,000 pounds. So the search was actually compared to the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. It's like the girl who was also was also from England, but she had been on a trip to Portugal and been taken from her room in the resort. Um, And that had happened a few years earlier. And it's still an unsolved case. But that case got a lot more attention. So people were kind of criticizing the media for not giving this case as much attention and notice um, because basically Madeline McCann's family was like, wealthy and you know she was like a really cute girl and so they were kind of saying well you're not treating this equally uh so the independent the newspaper um basically said quote kate and jerry mccann who were madeline's parents had a lot they were a couple of nice middle class doctors on holiday in an upscale resort karen matthews the mother of shannon is not as eloquent nor elegant nor as eloquent which is why they were saying they didn't get as much media they're being like classist almost basically Yeah. yeah Um, So anyway, Shannon's mother, Karen, is basically frantic. It's been three weeks since Shannon and her daughter went missing. She's leading her own search parties, like making T-shirts, rallying the neighbors, rallying her friends and family. Um, There were these campaigns, and yet some people just couldn't get on board and felt like something was off. Oh, boy. So people started to grow suspicious about Karen's odd behavior, including the family liaison officer who was assigned to the case. And her name was, get ready, Detective Constable Christine Freeman. Okay, well. I know, it went right to my head. I know. <laughs> Quite elegant. I'm just like... I think really you can just put constable in front of anything. Constable! And, and to, but like, come to on. To anyone in America, wow. they're like, wow, constable. Scotland Yard, you know, it's just like, it has a <laughs> ring to it. Yeah. If I were constable, I want to be that for Halloween, Constable Christine. Okay, well, I'm going to be Captain America, so. <laughs> Captain America. Captain America. Right, right, right. Okay. Detective Constable Christine Freem- Schieffer. Um, anyway... In an, in an interview with The Telegraph in 2017, um, Freeman... Nope, I'm just going to call her Christine. Christine. <laughs> just call her yourself. Just use it in the, in the first she, person. I, I uh, recalled. No. <laughs> in 2017, uh, Christine Freeman recalled that she felt something was odd from the start. So when she first got to the house, to Karen's house, Karen and her boyfriend, Craig Meehan, were playing Xbox... And while Christine was trying to, like, interview them to be like, your daughter disappeared yesterday or whatever, she wouldn't, like, look up from her game. Hmm. Like, she was like... Sounds like that fucking date I went on in Santa Clarita. <laughs> God damn. What? Remember that... Remember Homegirl who, like, played Pokemon Go for three hours? Oh, right, yeah. And then I was like, oh, so tell me about yourself. And she was like, can you not talk? I get distracted. I gotta catch them all, M. And I was like, okay, well, can I... Can I go home? Can I please leave? <laughs> I was like, can I please go home? So she pulled at that person. Got it. Um, and she, like, wouldn't look up, wouldn't talk about, didn't seem, like, distressed or anything. Um, and after a few minutes, Christine's phone rang, and it was, like, a pop song. You know, remember back in the day when, like, everyone had, like, Daddy Yankee or some shit as their, pop, yeah, yeah, as yeah. their ringtone? Mine was Laffy Taffy. Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. No comment. Mine was like some fucking indie shit, like Cold War Kids. Oh my god! Actually, it definitely wasn't. I'm, I'm pretending like I don't it know. Was that. It was Fall Out Boy. It was Fall Out Boy. It was Boy. Cold War Kids for like six straight years. Oh wow! Yep. Okay. Um. So her song, her phone rings. It was a pop song, and then Karen stops playing Xbox, gets up, and just starts dancing to this like ringtone, like a oh, like crazy, crazy person. person. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> um. Yep. And by the way, her fucking daughter's missing. So. In addition to Christine, this detective, um, Karen's close friend also began to doubt her and said that Karen came to her house and any time there was no police or cameras around, she would turn back into her normal happy self and like just like put around and like clean and act as if like her daughter was just at a friend's house, not like actually missing. Um, And she was like, something was off. I just didn't know what. 
So she said she remembers one time Karen wanted to watch the news. So they turned the new news on. And Shannon, her daughter's picture, came on uh, on the TV. And her, so the friend's uh, oldest daughter said, I can't wait for Shannon to come home. And then this woman, the friend, what's her name again? Oh, I didn't, t- I didn't say it. Okay, I think her name is Nicole. Oh. Her name is M. I get it. M. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important what her name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she said... Um, to her daughter, she was like trying to be honest and straightforward. And she said to her daughter, well, it's not guaranteed she's going to come home. So we need to prepare ourselves if that happens. Uh, and Karen turns to her. Oh, it was Natalie. OK, sorry. The friend's name was oh, Natalie. OK, uh, Karen turns to her friend and says, look, she's famous now. She's on TV. Don't worry. She's coming home. And they were like, what the? F-? And the- Natalie had been her best friend since they were like children. Like they had been friends for decades and she was like she was just acting so weird and i kept saying like if there's anything you need to tell me you can tell me um so another thing the police advised karen not to speak to the press but she spoke to them constantly despite being warned that it could put her daughter's life at risk so they were like sometimes in cases like this if you talk to the media it is more likely for your child to be killed right and her friend was like you can't go out there she was at her friend's house and natalie at natalie's house natalie was like you can't go out there and talk to them and she just waltzed right out and was like talking to every camera, every reporter. Well, she was acting really distraught, though, to the camera. Yes. OK. So, yeah, exactly. So Natalie was furious that she was just like, I'm going to do it anyway, despite being begged not to. Um, and she said there was even weirder behavior. So Karen came downstairs for the interview with the press holding a teddy bear. And Natalie asked, oh, is that Shannon's? Karen shrugged and said, I don't know. And then walked outside to talk to the to the cameras. Oh my <laughs> and God. she was like, this is so wild. So she's on camera. She's like... How does Natalie not feel safe? Natalie's uh, just like, something is fucking up. I'd be like, I need to get out of this house before she fucking kills me. And right. then pretends that some random teddy bear is mine. And takes the teddy bear. <laughs> um, and so she's on TV with the, this teddy bear. It's not even her daughter's crying and saying she misses her. Please bring back my missing princess daughter. And Natalie was like... She's literally never <laughs> said that. Like, she must have been told to say that. Like, it was completely out of nowhere. She's, so she's just acting totally whacked out. Like, none of this makes any sort of sense. Um, so fast forward a little bit. On March 14th, 2008. So this is 24 days after Shannon's disappearance. So a little over three weeks. About three and a half weeks. Police receive a tip from um, a public citizen uh, saying, please check out this flat that's, that's above me. And they go to this apartment and um, they find Shannon Matthews inside the apartment, hidden in the base of a double bed. <gasps> She's crying, frightened and drugged, but she is alive. Oh, my God. And she is in this bed being hidden at a house owned by a man named Michael Donovan, who just so happens to be Karen's boyfriend, Craig's uncle. There it is. Yep. So Michael Donovan. So Shannon, the girl who's missing her step uncle, uncle. Exactly. Uh, or no, her her boyfriend's uncle. No, Shannon's the girl who's missing. So yeah, it's so her Karen's, stepfather's. Well, it's just the boy. Are they married? Is Karen and her boyfriend married? No. So it's just her mom's boyfriend's uncle. Yes, that 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 that's it. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> really turn this into algebra. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, math is not my okay. This is even math. I just can't even. It's just hot. It's just hot. It's just it's just really hot. My brain just is so. We should buy AC. <laughs> oh, help me, Patreon. Okay. Eva, buy us a Dyson fan. Eva. Okay. Michael Donovan, uh, he's 39 years old. He has some learning dis- difficulties. He has an, like a really low IQ, about half the national average. He, it turns out he had been keeping Shannon hostage for about for 24 days. She had been tied to the bed. Keep in mind, she's nine, nine years old. So she had been lured to his house um, by being told that she was going to go on a vacation um, hmm. to the seaside. And she had been tied to the bed with an elastic strap coming from the ceiling that had a noose at the end. Oh. And she was drugged with sedatives to keep her quiet every now and then. And then the rope was long enough so that she could just barely reach the toilet if she needed to use it. But she couldn't go anywhere else just from the bed to the toilet. Um, when police did further testing, they discovered that she had actually been drugged for up to almost two years before her <gasps> disappearance. So they'd been regularly, her mother had been regularly drugging her. When the police picked Shannon up from the house, uh, she was totally oblivious to the situation. She was just crying and was like, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. She had no idea that there was a search for her. Like, she did not know. Um, and I actually found 
a photo. It's it's a copy of the list of rules that Michael had imposed on her. Oh god. Um like on a yellowed piece of paper and they say rules. You must not make any noise or bang your feet. You must not go near the windows. You must not get anything or do anything without me been there. Keep the TV volume low, only up to eight or lower. You can play the Super Mario games and you can play some DVDs and you can play the CD music. IPU. And apparently IPU was something her mother used to threaten her with, which and it stands for I promise you, as in like, I promise you, like... I mean it, basically. Like, I mean what I say. Yeah. Um, And here's a photo. This is, like, the little bed, creepy bunk bed she was being tied to. Oh, shit. I believe there was a mattress on it, but they took it away for, like, forensic testing. And then down here you can see the rope that the... It's, like, an elastic rope that was tied to the ceiling. And the person stretched it out and it, like, just reached the toilet to make sure that she could reach the toilet. And it was, like, tied around her. Really fucked up. Um, So they arrest Michael Donovan. Obviously, it's his apartment. Charge him with kidnapping and false imprisonment. And during the interrogation, he yells, quote, get Karen down here. We've got a plan. We're sharing the money. 50,000 pounds. Use the pounds on again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. LBs. (laughs) 50,000 LBs. Uh (laughs) At least you didn't go retro and make it the hashtag, because that used to be pound oh, sign, guys. that's right. But then I would have said 50,000 numbers. I'm so confused. 50,000 hashtags? Hashtag 50,000. Yeah, I would Yeah, to the people younger than us, a uh, hashtag actually used to be called a pound sign. It used sign. to be a pound sign. That's it's right. actually called an octothorpe. Fun oh, fact. God, you're just blowing my mind today. Because all the points... they do say are... on the phone, they do say, and then hit pound. So you're, they still say it on the phone. Like, okay. type in your number and then hit pound. All right. Hopefully Hit the they're pound not, key. Hopefully they're not like, what's pound? Pound. It's like, it's hashtag. Hit the hashtag Hit, button. Then hit hashtag. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's when Karen herself was arrested because he literally said, we had a plan. We're sharing the money. You know. Yeah. Just threw under the bus. So on April 8th, 2008, Karen is charged with child neglect and perverting the course of justice. Uh, turns out she and her boyfriend's uncle, Michael Donovan, just the two of them, had devised a plot to have Shannon fake kidnapped so they could reap the financial reward. Oh, God. Okay. So it's thought that here's the plan. Karen and Michael had plotted to release Shannon after a while and then to have Michael discover her at a local market, take her to to the police station, and claim the reward. As if they wouldn't be like, but you're the uncle and also why, I mean, obviously they're not right in the head, but my different level of morality yeah, um, makes me think, why couldn't they just like have her hanging out in that house for three weeks, like not on a rope, like watching TV and like, why'd she have to go through, why'd she have to be sedated and put on like a rope? Probably because she was there for three weeks and couldn't she just like hang out and have a three week sleepover vacation and then yeah, but they, they didn't find want her at the any neighbors knowing she was there like they didn't oh. want her near a window in case people were went looking but then just like close the door like i don't know i just i mean the reason she was found is because a neighbor said i hear foot like little kid footsteps oh. and there's never even been a kid in that apartment so they gotcha. just felt sketched out and called the police so even just the footsteps alone to the gotcha, bathroom gotcha, and gotcha. back like tipped off a neighbor <clears throat> so i think they were super what observant neighbor by the I know, way i know that bl- that blew me away i was like how could they possibly but they said like there's never been a child there and this guy like doesn't have kids and like suddenly i'm hearing footsteps like kids footsteps but also yeah day in day out the fan whoops that scared me i thought it was a ghost i thought it was too (laughs) (laughs) anyway moving on world is mad you drank all the little cry okay um where are we we were at the lb pound sign (laughs) (laughs) that's everywhere on this i don't know where to go (laughs) okay so obviously not a great plan that like the mother of the missing girl is like, well, I guess I should get my reward now. You know, like, it's just really insanely stupid. Um, clearly not a foolproof plan. So during Karen's interrogation, she admits that she called 999. You know what that is. 999? Yeah. Information? I don't know. 411? No. Friend. Star 67? We're in England, so it's 911, but... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I did not know that. Okay, so... Okay, Okay, 999 is 911. Got it. So she calls 999 as part (laughs) information. Uh, (laughs) Hello, (laughs) operator. 
Fresh. Operator, I'm using Fresh. the hashtag. Where, where are you? Hit the hashtag sign. Pa- number. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> During her interrogation, Karen admits that she called 909 as part of an act to make it look like Shannon was missing despite knowing she wasn't actually missing. So she fully admits that she knew she wasn't missing. Okay. Here's the... F- I mean, it's all fucked up, but here's another fucked up thing. Karen had seven children from five different men. Wow. She picked Shannon to be the one to be fake kidnapped because she was a girl and the most photogenic and thought that that (laughs) would maximize the financial reward. Good to know. Cute. So detectives think uh, that she had already settled the idea of staging a kidnapping after seeing how much money poured into the Madeline McCann fund, which was the girl I mentioned earlier who was taken from Portugal. And it happened in like 2003, I think. So like five years earlier, she'd already been like kind of inspired to do this so she was like oh that's the amount i'm looking for that's like like, a goal oh they're raising millions of dollars like i could get on this um but they also think she may have copied some of the details from a plot in the tv show shameless which is (laughs) by the way a great tv show (laughs) great so that's awesome yeah great so the trial took place at leeds crown court in december 2008 and both karen and michael were sentenced to eight years imprisonment each each eight years okay Karen only served four years um, and is thought to have earned money during her time in prison by writing dirty letters to male pen pals outside of prison who would send cash in exchange for the notes. She's just a winner. Um, I mean, she's an entrepreneur is what I'm hearing. Not not like a really bright one. Not a good one and not one with ethics at all. Right. Sure. But Uh, she's she's definitely made it clear to all of us. She's here for a buck. She's (laughs) here for a buck. Hasn't gotten it yet. But, you know, maybe someday and doesn't deserve it either doesn't deserve it uh probably will never get it but like you're trying a for effort a for effort um upon her release karen changed right changed her identity and moved to the other side of the country she is thought to have turned to christianity oh my god okay she claims she is completely innocent of the plot knew right. nothing about it and insists mm-hmm. quote i'm not britain's worst mum. i didn't kill anybody okay yeah true i yeah. guess you have some points Congrats. kind of we're so proud of you for that by the yeah, way thank you for not killing your child that must have been really hard for you i mean i feel like you're really uh so brave of you proving, to come forward about that yes proving yourself thank you for sharing your story <laughs> after shannon was rescued she was taken into government custody before being given a new identity and a new family Karen had seven children. Karen, the mom, had seven children with five different men, as right. I mentioned. Yeah. Um, all of those children were put into separate custody setups. So they were all put into different care, uh, into different family care units and given new identities, which is just so fucked up. that like So sad. And these- then they had to hear that their mom was like, well, you weren't photogenic enough. I'd be like, thank God I was yeah, ugly. Yeah. Thank I, God. I picked one of your prettier siblings. And like, yeah, well, she you was, know what? It benefited me. <laughs> while she was being interviewed, like she would like say the wrong. They'd be like, how many children do you have? And she'd be like, six. No, wait, seven. And they were like, girl, come on. <laughs> Is it just a blur after she the third like, one? She like, <laughs> no shit about her kids at all. It's like really sad. And she, she just treated them very, very poorly. Um, I actually was like listening to the case file episode on this to get some more information and i guess they found scribbled so shannon had a bedroom it had like pink peeling wallpaper and she shared it with her two and a half year old stepsister and in one of the like ripping pieces of paper she just wrote i want to live with my dad i want to live with my dad like it was just really sad and i guess her mom would just scream at her like the day that she went missing her mom screamed at her and basically said like never come back Shit. when she went to school and she was nine so like she was just in a really terrible and why was natalie still friends with this woman you know who knows that's the question of the year who I knows think. apparently she is not anymore um so but about so craig her mm-hmm. boyfriend craig Meehan, although he apparently was truly not involved in the kidnap plot his uncle was and she was and apparently they didn't loop him in on it he's probably a good person and they're like, oh, he'll ruin it for us. He was later found to have been in possession of child pornography. Never mind. <laughs> I love when I was just like, this is what it is. And then I'm like, lol, here we go. Um, he was found to be uh, in possession of like 185 photos or videos or something fucked Yuck. up of child pornography and was sentenced to 20 weeks in prison. 20 weeks. But he was released on the same day. On that day, he didn't actually go to prison because he had spent longer on remand than the length of the sentence. Oh, my. So the child pornography was not thought to be related to the Shane and Matthews case, 
But he went into hiding anyway following the charges, and he was actually spotted out in public for the first time like a year or two ago, um, reportedly seen buying beer and scratch cards before retreating into a bookies, which my coworker, my office mate Joanna... I was like, what's a bookies? And she laughed at me for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and she's like, it's like a betting shop, like a gambling shop, which I sort yeah. of figured. But like, we don't have those here. But you basically go in and like bet on horses and shit. You know, mm. that. I just invented the horses thing, but I imagine that's... No, a bookie. That's like what... But it's like... We a, do have that. It's like, I just don't think we have it the same way anymore. Yeah, but it's like a store. Like they, It's like oh, a legal, no. like a store. Like I'm they, used to a bookie being a person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like gotcha. a bookie, but a bookie's, a bookie's is like a... Like a, a gambling... Place. A betting shop. Betting store. Betting shop. Oh, okay. So Michael Donovan, the uncle who had strapped her down, kidnapped her, whatever. Uh-huh. He was released in 2012 after serving only four years of his sentence. Um, little is currently known of his whereabouts... Um, and Shannon herself is now a 19 year old woman. Um, but there's a court order preventing anyone from contacting her or knowing her true identity because she was given a new identity and the court protects children who've been through something like this from like being hounded by the press. Right. Um, but there's no shortage of people just like running around the country trying to find anyone who looks like her and just like harassing them and taking photos. Yeah. So if you're one of those people, it's fucking stop. (laughs) Fuck you. So unsurprisingly, she is not believed to have seen her mother since but um the most fucked up like sad part is that she was extremely close with her grandparents who basically like raised her because her parents she got separated so fucked up and they have not been able to like speak to her ever since she disappeared basically since she was nine and i guess her grandfather um has gotten just like extremely sick has lost like 20 30 pounds has been in and out of the hospital of like sickness and stress um and they have basically said like all we want is to like talk to her one more time um so recently shannon's grandfather gordon revealed his heartache over what happened describing how it's affected his health how he longs for his granddaughter to get in touch um and at the moment he and his wife june so her grandmother are occasionally kept informed by social services but otherwise they have no contact with her and recently they saw a picture of her nearly a decade after they had last seen her so like yeah she's 19 so the last time they'd ever seen her was when she was nine yeah and they said she looked beautiful and they were just Aww. heartbroken. Um, and then her grandfather said, my one wish is that when she's old enough to understand what happened properly, she'll come and knock on that door. But I fear it'll be too late and I won't be here to see her. I'll be up there in heaven looking down on her. And recently the BBC mm-hmm. screened a drama called The Moor Side, which was like kind of controversial. It was sort of like a dramatization of this whole case. Um, and some people were like, well, that's fucked up. And some people were like, yeah, it is fucked up because that's what they did Mm -hmm. like whatever so it's about shannon's kidnapping and it's kind of like debated how like on point it is but it's supposed to be a pretty good representation of what happened um and as of that as of now we don't really know much about the whereabouts of uh shannon herself but i hope she's doing well and i hope she has been able to move on from her crazy crazy life and childhood yowza and that is the story of shannon matthews that was a good one just blew right through that no i no. maybe it needs to always be hot in here so we just fly <laughs> through things maybe um that's all i got for you all right i mean that was a good one i'm also scared to go home because of my story because of the ghosts and someone pulling me out of bed and the homeless person oh no so i'll also be thinking about potentially getting kidnapped do you have ac at home oh yeah that's oh, like oh fuck you okay can i come over yeah <laughs> By the way, Christine still has not come to my house. I've never been to M's house. Not even a little bit. No. And I've lived there for going on two years. Nope, never been. But I'm getting the hell out. Um, yeah. I really when? Yeah, when? At the end of the year, I'm going to move in with RJ again. Oh, and somewhere Allison. else? Yeah, what? Oh, yeah, yeah right. We're going to find out RJ's place. going to. Okay. Well, I learned that I'm like very good at recycling um, my roommates because like I when we first moved out here, I lived with our friend Christine. Right. And then we lived in different places for a while. And then now we live together again. That's true. And she took RJ's spot. And now I'm going to go live with RJ again. I feel like that's good, though, because it means you're, like, good at finding people you, like, are compatible with. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go. Do you know what part of town you're going to live in? Can we triangulate that real quick? Um, are you going to be close to me? I will say it's within... It's If you were to look at a Google map, mm-hmm. it will be... If you were to draw a circle... I'm just going to tell you the points because we found like our outlying cities that we're willing to look at, but okay. it will be, um, like, uh, 
Montrose, Altadena, Pasadena, like Highland Park, Echo Park area, and then Los Feliz to Luca Lake, North Hollywood, and then North Hollywood to okay to so Montrose. Like, it's like a big giant basically circle. Basically northeast. Anything, LA. anything in that giant circle. That's a perfect circle, by the way, because I've actually drawn it on the map. So, but that's just northeast LA, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but go to the southern part of that, because otherwise you, Altadena is too far. Well, we tried to find worst case scenario, dis- like a distance between your house and Allison's job. So it'll be like worst case scenario. That's like a four. Oh, minute drive. okay, okay, okay. But that's like also worst case outliers. We're trying for like Burbank, Glendale. Okay, I guess I could, I guess I could live with that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I am nervous to go home. Thank you for telling me a scary story. You're welcome. I have uh, something to ease your mind. A geoscope? I sure do. Okay. Please hold. Um, I just learned something crazy. What? I learned that apparently most multivitamins aren't even as clean as a bag of organic potato chips. What? What? Seriously. I had no idea. I know. And we care so much about our food, but we don't even know what's in the pills we take every day that are supposed to help us be healthier. So what the hell are we supposed to do? What is one to do? Do you know? What is? I think that the thing that I started doing is called taking ritual every single day day so ritual um is a multivitamin that i've been taking every day it's really awesome i can instead of taking like eight different vitamins that i find at the pharmacy and think are going to help me i take one and i know that my uh nutritional benefits are covered also you know i love a good fun fact these are vegan sugar-free non-gmo gluten-free and allergen-free so if you live in la this covers about all your bases for you um, they're made in the USA without synthetic fillers or colorants. They're basically what they are, delayed release capsules, and they bypass the stomach to help prevent nausea. And um, they're like beadlet in oil formula, and they, they keep the dry ingredients separate from oils. Listen, this is about science. Uh, yeah, well, also, <laughs> this is a science podcast. Right. But the thing that we should all really be taking note of is that they're mint scented. Yeah, they are, actually. It's great. And they're in, they have an in-bottle tab enriched with pure peppermint oil, so really, like, if anyone's going to win, it's your nose. Yeah, it's a vitamin of luxury is yeah. what I just invented. I am a luxury. I deserve a luxury. Hey, thank you. That's what we say on this podcast. If yeah. you if you don't know, <laughs> uh, it's a subscription base. No gap in nutrient levels. It's $30 a month and delivered straight to your door. And if you buy omega-3 yourself, which is included in the vitamin itself, if you buy omega-3 yourself, it's the cost of an entire ritual bottle. So you really wow. are saving a lot by just buying ritual alone and subscribing to it yourself and you can fill the gaps in your diet with the best source ingredients and if you forget a few days you can snooze on your order until you catch up happiness guaranteed no questions asked you can cancel easy easily at any time and just so you know 95 percent of women by the way do not get the vitamin i'm sure i'm one of them do not get the vitamins and minerals they need on a daily basis so that's why ritual created a smarter vitamin with the nine essential ingredients that women lack most so if you want to try ritual yourself you can go to ritual.com slash drink Choose clean ingredients backed by science. Sign up now at ritual.com slash drink. All right. Here's the uh, horoscope for Scorpios. The Scorpio, Scorp, Scorpio scope. What do we call it? Geoscope. Geoscorpio scope. I don't know. Oh, so many syllables. Okay. Oh, my God. Tomorrow's Friday the 13th, guys. <sighs> Eva and I... Oh, you reacted the exact opposite <laughs> way. Eva was like, cowabunga, dude. And I was like, oh, boy. You like Friday the 13th, Eva? Well, I usually like it, but not when Mercury's in retrograde. That's just like a double mess. I'm just hoping it, like, cancels it out, though. Okay. It probably won't. It'll just probably fuck shit up. Maybe two wrongs make a right. Probably not. Who knows? Eva, let us Eva, know. Eva, why do you like Friday the 13th? I, I also I just really like the movie. Oh, the movie. <laughs> The other day, this I was like 9,000 degrees out, and I was at fucking Walmart during my lunch break because I accidentally bleached our bath mat, and I had to buy a new one. It doesn't matter. It's a long story. My dad is visiting, and he's very picky, and I was like, well, he needs a bath mat, or else he'll bitch till the end of time. <laughs> so I ran to Walmart on my lunch break in Burbank, and I'm like trying to buy a fucking... They're like $25 at Walmart, and I'm like, I just want a towel for the floor. I don't need it. To- <laughs> so I'm just like so hot and just staring at this thing and this small child runs up to me with a dvd and like smacks me in the leg with it and goes it's friday the 13th and i'm like what the f-? i mean he's literally Eva's child three he's like so small he can barely speak and i look down at him expecting to be like oh hello you're cute 
no, he's a fucking demon and he's holding this Friday the 13th movie and he keeps like smacking me with it. And his mom just like doesn't give a shit. And I'm like, this is literally Walmart. Like this is a stereotype of Walmart. <laughs> this is such a Walmart the moment. The small child is smacking me with a fucking Friday the 13th movie and yelling about it in my face. And I'm just like, I made this like horrible like old person face of like get off my lawn like get out of my <laughs> towel aisle like I was just so irritated and he wouldn't go away and I kept having to like back away from him and so now I just hate Friday the 13th because that child because the it. exact moment only a couple days ago <laughs> anyway I don't really know I just, just I like Friday the 13th in that I like kind of feeling like I'm relatively close to October and Halloween that's that's fair that's but fair. that's about it I don't because I I don't know because I, I don't know anything about it and a kid hit me really hard in the leg <laughs> all right i'm gonna read this friday the 13th scorpio scope for geo <clears throat> oh my god it starts with a great word blaze oh blaze those trails scorpio Aww. blaze would be so proud with the moon leveling up in your leadership zone people may turn to you as the final word on a group decision we do really do trust Gio with all the final decisions of the podcast especially the financial ones De- oh only i mean there's no one else we can trust. actually em and i don't even look at the financials we just let Gio no geo's it. in charge of quick book, quickbooks yeah actually. that's right so. he it's called um don't do this p- paw books <laughs> what the hell it like, is not like quick barks so or hot. anything fuck you pop quick pop whatever whatever you said <laughs> quick bark quick barks god quick woofs all right you I'm know done. you don't need to show off okay um <clears throat> anyway with your keen sense of what's cool oh god here i am not to mention culturally ahead of the curve again always giving him such a fucking big head i swear to god (laughs) this is your opportunity to share your discoveries of late along with implementing new procedures at work you could introduce your squad to an (gasps) amazing indie band the geo trio that's us (laughs) oh our squad (laughs) amazing indie band a local rapper or an understated but insanely authentic restaurant. What the fuck? That specializes in foreign cuisine. <laughs> it's that it's that dog bakery I saw over there on third. <laughs> on La Brea. <laughs> yeah. Last sentence. Go nouveau, Scorpio. This Go makes nouveau. me want to die. This is horrifying. That's what like is the this? most geo fucking jo- geoscope I've ever this seen. This is like if Geo were a human and was like smacking on the keyboard like <laughs> Let's talk about how it's like his butt curtain just brushed the keys and it spelled that out. It's like my squad, my geo trio. I will teach my squad what is cool (laughs) because they do not. They clearly do not know about the local rap artist that I know about. What the? Yeah, his name is Lil G. Lil G. Baby G. Snoop Dogg. Okay, I'm sorry. I just (laughs) just go so I can stop. Um, Okay, (laughs) you can find us at. ATWWD podcast on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Please help us donate. You don't realize what that money does. It's you just please keep doing it. We're always like, you don't realize it. You won't tell you. (laughs) It's like if we were to explain it, that would be its own episode. It's just a lot of stuff that behind the scenes you don't realize this podcast. There's a lot of dynamics that are not noticed right away. Sure. That you're helping us with. Um, You can also find our website and that's where we drink. Dot com. You can also find our shop, and that's why we drink. Bigcartel.com. You can also find our webs or our email, and that's why we drink at gmail.com, where you can send in your personal true crime and ghost stories. Um, if you send us your personal true crime and ghost stories, we do a listener's episode at the first of every month. You can also uh, send us your goodies and your mail that we would like to open on a camera for you. Our post office box is 1920 Hillhurst Ave, number 265, Los Angeles, 90027. And if you send us your goodies and your mail and your snacks or whatever it is you would like to send us, which we are always grateful for, we have a fan mail video that we do every month. And it's on Patreon, so if you're on Patreon, you can watch it. If you did send us something and you want to watch the video but you're not on Patreon, like let us know and we'll just send you the link because we want you to be able to see it too. Like see our see us open your yes. Um, also, just real quick, if you go on our website and that's where you drink dot com and hit tour, you can see all our upcoming tour dates. We have several cities that are coming up, and we're adding more pretty regularly. 
And you can also catch us on the 22nd at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for our Facebook yes, Live. Yes, that's right. Please come spend time with us and ask us questions. Otherwise, we're just talking heads and we are nervous and don't know how to interact Nobody with a computer wants, screen. Nobody wants that. So please come with your questions and fair questions because, wow, we don't want to have to answer something awkward live. Oh, God. And that's it. That's all we got, guys. Thank you for listening, and thank you for being um, you and so supportive of us and for helping us make this possible. And that's why we drink. Clink. <laughs>